for the show for the oh, handsome nice. oh cool oh you don't do that yourself i'm um, not anymore it's not my i mean editing the podcast is not is too hard <laughs> it's too much of a hassle yeah okay so here we go so people thir- 13 people on youtube okay cool and your mic sounds good <sighs> All right. All right. People are like I'm at I'm at work. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. Okay, cool. So on my machine I've got this branch here. DOS blog, and this is from, you've got a couple of branches going right now, don't you? Yeah, I am working out of uh, web core integration. So I kind of, uh, I kind of, yeah, I've kind of branched off you and I've kind of created a another did you of- Did you fork it? Is it in your own? Because like, if I go... So I think if, I've pushed uh, it. Let's see. Here's where we are. No, I didn't, because that would mean we wouldn't be able to do No, we're not. Because see, this is title module change. We remember that one from a while back. You must yeah. be in your own. Yeah, yeah. Let me shoot you that, because I'm not sure you have it. From here, web core integration? That's the one. Okay, cool. So you says 12 commits ahead of me. And two commits behind. I don't know what you're behind on. Probably nothing interesting. Okay, so this is the. Okay, talk in. in, in people are asking where I'm at. Okay, so this one here, your branch, have you worked on it since? Because this doesn't look. Is this the one you did last month? Yes, yeah. Have you checked in lately? Uh, no, no. But within the last two weeks, I haven't. Okay, so this is the one where you've got DOS Blog for our viewers, a fifteen-year-old yes. blogging engine that runs in that was written in .NET one one, and then two, and then four. Mm-hmm. You've got it running on .NET Core, even though it's web forms, because you did everything. But this one, or this is the this is the one that you wrote from scratch. Uh, this is so you should be looking at the one. I oh, I'm not sharing my screen. That's probably explaining yeah. a lot of our issues. I apologize. This go. part here oh, is the part you wrote yeah. from scratch. That's blog web UI we wrote from scratch and is the web core layer of everything. So that's just MVC web core sitting on top of everything. Web okay. UI core, the top one right there, is the integration to the original stuff. So this really just looks at. This gets us to look at .NET 1.1, VB, .NET, mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff. That gets you to look at all that stuff. Okay. Let's give people a bit of a, of a history, if that's okay. Mm-hmm. If I go to Hanselman, and yours is papastring.com? Yep. So Mark and I run and go to the blog. our blogs. Yeah, so you, have, you do the same thing I do. So his home, his home page is his own thing like mine is this is dos blog and it's cool because his site is a very different site than my site but they're both dos blog and you've got category and date so we have the same month view so here's his month view here's my month view so we have our own themes and our own skins these are uh, .NET 4.0, I think we've upgraded them to right now. Yep. Right? And then you'll notice if we hit comments, he's got an interesting URL here that's of one style. Yep. And then if we go to mine, I've also got an interesting v- URL, except mine uses question marks, yours uses commas. When we look at your top level, this is a very common style in DOS blog which is camel case. Is that right? I think that's called camel case or Pascal case probably. 
and people tease us for these, you know, and someday in the future, we'll want to make those all lowercase with a hyphen, right? And make them look nice. But for now, this is what they are. Um, this blog, if I go and FTP over to it, I'm going to FTP into my system. So here's the machine I run my blog on. And if I go into blog content, these are all of the files for my blog going back into 2005. So 12 years of blogging represented by 4,406 XML files across 100 megabytes. Right. right? So you've got some directories with your images and all kinds of other stuff. Exactly, exactly. I've got a bunch of directories with my, with my images. So for example, right now, if I'm going to back up my blog. It's a matter of doing that. So I'm going to back up my blog. And then I can run locally. Now, if we go out to here, and I just did a git. We have everything. There we go. So we'll go into source. We've got DOS blog all. SLN. That's our main one. If I recall, we're st are we still building this on community 2015? Yep, yep. You should be good 2015 go. or 2017? Well, oh, yeah, I guess I just did a, on my branch, I just did 2017. So I did the latest, so I'm, yeah. People are teasing me that I just FTP'd into something. <laughs> I need to remember that it works, though. <laughs> yeah. All right. So firing up Visual Studio. I think I've got 2017 here. I've got 2015 and 2017 on this machine. So the engine that opens these XML files up is called DOS blog runtime. DOS, yeah, right there. The company that originally worked on this was with Clemens Vasters, who now works on, um, on Azure. And he, he, Newtelligence sponsored the creation of DOS blog. That's why it's called Newtelligence. That company was his consulting company. That's, that company's gone now. Um, so we should probably change the namespace someday. Um, did we, can we open this this way? DOS blog, let's try that. I'm going to try it in 2017. Oh, yeah, it should be. Ah, there you go. There's, there's our 2015 one right there. Okay. okay. I don't think, uh, you're, in, uh, you're on 2017 or not? I'm, yeah, 2017. It, it didn't make any difference for me. I mean, it just didn't, didn't make any difference. Yeah, it was happy. Okay, it, good. It was happy. All right. Cool. Let's see, just so I can build it real quick. Get rid of you. Yeah, .NET is pretty smart, and I haven't had any issues going from 2017 to 2015. This is a preview of 15.5, I think. Cool. So, runtime handles the XML files. Yeah. Web core, what was in web core? I think that was, yeah, that was kind of your HTT modules, your HTTP handlers, your uh, any kind of thing that web forms would have needed uh, right. Right. to kind of protect itself or manage itself. Or, um, and you added like SEO meta tags, and you added Twitter card support, and you added a bunch of stuff that modified the way the templates would load. Yeah, I modified those, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. and one of the things that was interesting about DOS blog for the time, and why it was a valuable thing for the time, I don't think people realize how useful it was. My theme, this is my theme here, Jin Yang, who is the, the lead, lead designer on Stack Overflow, Design my theme. I paid him. Here's a here's an example of a theme. Now remember, this was 12 years ago. It's not Razor, but it was prescient in that it looks a lot like Razor, doesn't it? Yeah. Like you could imagine someone going like this and just going like maybe changing it to like like this. Oops. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we have a templating language that's built with regular expressions and dreams and wishes because it's just garbage. But it worked and it was cool 12 years ago. So the part 
that is web forms is just this one here, right? Isn't it? Yep. And everything else is just in process DLLs. Right. So then the theory is, could we uh, put me do this in .NET Core with .NET Standard 2? And you had discovered .NET Standard 2 and started to realize that that could be a thing, didn't you? Exactly. One, when I tried this with one, whatever, one X, whatever it was, um, things just hated me. So I, it became obvious that it was just was not going to work. And then when two, it, hardly anything broke. <laughs> I was thinking, well, yeah, this might work. And then I think you and um, Scott Hunter, I think, was doing a talk. And I was like, yeah, I think that actually could work now. Yep. Um, just double checking my machine has become slow. I want to make sure that something hasn't decided to defragment or something. It's funny how those things work. Got a lot of things running right now, including streaming this. All right. You can still see this screen, right? Yep. Yep. I'm still seeing it. Okay. So then you, do you want to share your screen and then show us your core port? Sure. Sure. Will it, um, will it, you, you know how to do that in Hangouts with the green thing on the left there? Uh, screen, I see it. Yep. And uh, you let me know when you can see. Uh, hmm. Yep. That's you. Okay, there cool. All right. So, could you make um, your, could you control scroll and imp uh, make your text bigger? Yes, there you go, lovely. Okay, so as I mentioned before, so Dustblog Web UI is kind of like the MVC part sitting on top, and then on top of that, or just below that, I kind of wanted to follow a, almost like a repository pattern where you're kind of um, pulling in data from what is what is Dustblog and what's doing all the work, and. The things that I had to do first was make sure that we have the right version. So with the with the versioning and how we decide what version is compatible with what, I think four point six point one I want to say was the was the magic number. So most of these um, most of these projects needed to be upgraded to at least four six one. That was step step one, just so that we had a compatibility and all the shims would work to make everything work in the background. Um, then on top of that um, the, the main projects were uh, actually not cool, sorry, uh, were services. In fact, I can show this. I wanted to go ahead and dive into one of these. Uh, uh, actually, let me just see here. So the idea is when you are porting something, if I can put words in your mouth and you correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. we separated the concerns and you say, all right, what's the thing responsible for getting the files? What's the thing responsible for rendering the screen? What's the thing, you know, what are each of the responsibilities of this? And when it seems like the, the genius that you had was the moment when you realized that the rendering of these blog posts is entirely unrelated to the stuff underneath it. So why not? start porting things over and you went and basically took the core engine the good the good bits <laughs> and tossed the bad bits you know exactly porting doesn't mean yes. getting old code to work it, it means taking the good parts and then also another thing worth pointing out is that this was written before link <laughs> yes right this yeah. was written in idiomatic.net one which is quite old um, so you're able to go and, you know, subtract huge amounts of code because it's an entirely different world now, isn't it? It's an entirely yeah. different .NET. Yeah, precisely. Okay. So, so as I was mentioning, um, what, what I was trying to do was make sure I can just reach into the parts that are necessary for, for the, for the, that are dust blog. Um, so as previously designed, everything was factory pattern. Um, and so this is literally the old code. This, this has been around for maybe a dozen years, I'm assuming. Um, and what I could do is, is set up a dependency injection, iBlog repository, pull that directly into, um, in, into that UI layer I mentioned earlier. And I am literally 
this piece of code gives me access to perfectly working 12 year old code. I don't have to think about how the XML files exist, how, you know, where they're stored. As long as I put in some basic information, uh, I'm, I'm set. I was looking at this and I noticed that you used IDOS blog settings, which is new, and you appear to be doing that as a, a bit of, of dependency injection. Yes, yes. But you so, didn't dependency inject logging and blog data service. Right. No, I didn't. So those have to be so so this is where we kind of marry in two worlds here. Um the the logging data service is actually and thankfully you had the the idea of, of making sure these were interfaces to begin with. So um these actually existed in the old stuff. So wherever you see new intelligence dot, you know we're talking about Right, exactly. Stuff. That iLogging data service is not the one that comes with .NET Core. It's it's the one from twelve years ago. Exactly, exactly. So this is me pulling in um DOS blog old and trying to use it in a context that is in this idea is supposed to be kind of rough facsimile of a re repository pattern. Um and so I can do simple things like passing an ID and get a blog post. These are again this this code is essentially a port of really old code and it needs cleaning up. But so that factory it, pattern worked exactly as it did years ago. You just, you it, just boom and you're opening it up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then you kind of more when we look at exactly how we want to use that in again the MVC um, uh, style project. You are literally. And this is probably where people are more used to seeing, you know, you adding singletons or uh, MVC, a web core project. And I'm literally saying, okay, well, I want to use the repository inside a controller. I can just start start pulling it in in that way. So here's me defining it, and then in my controller, I can start pulling in whatever I need. Um, and here's the blog repository again. I'm just pulling it in and calling it as I see fit. Now, this should look more like contemporary code we're all used to seeing. Right. Now, this is really interesting. And I thought this was quite clever of you because what you're doing here, if I understand correctly, is you're pulling the posts out of the existing repository the way you used to. And then rather than taking the model that we made 10, 12 years ago, you're making a projection of a view model getting it because that was one of the right. challenges with that blog was we went back and forth making the what goes on the screen look like what it's on the disk you know sure. and there yeah. were multiple times when it's like oh we have to change what's on disk in order to change the screen and that's silly here you made a projection and now post view model is different than you know it contains post is that correct uh yes yes it, it so contains post but it's over over post uh, posts, uh, yeah. List view model posts. It's an I list of post view model. And then entry, hover over entry. Uh, Line 37, say, or anyway. I always want to type. Yeah, it's an entry. That is a new intelligence blog entry. That's the disk entry. Right. So yes. so you, you project to you what you call a post view model mm -hmm. and you dig it out of the entry and then you do your little the little left hand right hand dance right there which is pretty straightforward but it's nice you change the permalink from link and you, you could modify things at that point yeah we haven't done it yet but like on line 44 you could change the link style and store it one way and display it another way if you felt like it yeah exactly that's going to be uh, one of the interesting challenges there is um, preserving yeah. preserving the old and new in terms of the the web contract right in terms of our urls what we've mm -hmm. said to the world our urls are and what they will be in the future. And, and that's going to be an interesting challenge in itself. But. Now, previously, when I showed themes, there's a folder called themes, then a named theme, and then I have home template dot blog template. Mm -hmm. But we had this theming engine that was 70% of Razor. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe that's generous. It was very much like Razor, though. It was very prescient. Yeah, it had a lot of stuff. And this is, again, years and years and years ago. You just say, let's use Razor, which means that we can toss all that code. All the right. Razor parsing code goes away, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, most of it does. We ha we're going to have to look at things like how we, because within that, that idea, you said, well, let me just put a title, and a title would appear, and let me put a link to a previous page, and a previous page link would appear. 
And mm. you've still got to think about that layer that says this command means this thing specific to blogging. Right. Um, but yes, you're right. I mean, all the ideas behind what what was originally invented can be then translated um, directly here. I took a stab at the idea of themes because we're still going to need that concept um, because people are going to lay out their pages different. So, it makes me wonder if those are functions. That I feel like there's three ways to do that. I feel like there's there they are they are functions that are available, like extension methods that Razor has that we can then access those things. They are partial views, right? And then we just have a library of convenient partial views. And then the third one would be putting a whole bunch of stuff in the view model, assuming that someone might need it later. Right. Like your projection is quite small; it's like nine items. Mm -hmm. But if you loaded up that post view model with a bunch of stuff, or even a non, and this would be an interesting question, uh, strongly typed or not strongly typed, maybe you load up your post view model with a bunch of with a bag of stuff, huh. you know, what I mean? like a bag of of name value pairs, where okay. whatever they want, you just have to load it into the bag. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. an interesting idea. The point is, once it gets on the model, though, can you go over to themes page? There it is. So here's you take the DOS blog theme. There's page.cshtml. Right now, there's a couple things you could do. You've got at model list post view model. If the stuff we want is hanging off of list post view model, then we could access it. Right. You could also add a um, at inject. Oh, got you. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So another idea would be to like the. Here's a question: Do we teach DOS blog? about stuff like it would know strongly type that 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 scott and mark want the stuff or do we just make it so the the razor purse the razor is where you integrate right you go and say at inject you make sure that your dependency injection is set up to give you the things that you want mm -hmm. and then you maybe break some rules of views and do a little bit of logic in your in your razor yeah, yeah. In, tough question in, yeah in, in my head i'd, I'd imagine we would we would lay out uh, specific sections. I was kind of I kind of and I'd, I'd almost limited myself to the way it was already done. That is to suggest um, I don't know if you remember much about the theming how it was done before, but you had or we had specific pages. You had the home page, and within that was the concept of a page, and within that was a concept of um, of these um, of these functions kind of like that sat in between it so i was kind of mimicking that almost automatically and I'm mm -hmm. now it may not have been the right thing to do but um there's two interesting comments here i'm seeing on well many interesting comments but two uh one gentleman is saying refactoring idos blog settings into the options pat pattern okay let's talk about that. versus options so that's interesting and mm -hmm. then someone else is making a comment daniello is saying this shows how dynamic things are. It is overwhelming sometimes when there are six ways to do something. Like these are all perfectly legitimate ways yeah. that would work just fine. So then you have to ask yourself, like, you know, how far down would you, how far down the road would one go before they said, "Oh crap, I've gone too far," or "Oh, that was the wrong direction." See, this yeah. I think is quite clever. Look at this, folks. So keeping in mind that these are 12-year-old files, he's added them to the configuration builder. So every name value pair from three different old style files and two different new style files, 39, 36, and 37, are all available to us. And you had to modify the configuration shape of it just a smidge. Right, exactly, exactly. So, so I think I'd made a few uh, adjustments. I hadn't quite figured out exactly how to, um, sorry, how to interpret some things in 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 the class I was trying to, to mess with. But essentially, my um, my dust blog settings um, uh, interface that I'm passing around everywhere yeah. has access to site config meta config secure site security config which were all things that were absolutely essential for old school dust blog so site config would hold things like um the path the, right the, the base master path of my of my my site which would be popperstring.com slash blog right and it would hold information about my thin themes or anything else like that or meta config would hold stuff about my twitter and my facebook and yeah. whatever social 
social networks that have. But now I've got all that information and, and we would access that sort of static file. Now we can access it in a more, um, in, in a much more kind of dependency injection type way. And every time, every time it changes, I get to reload it into memory automatically. Right. Stuff that you had to design by, by definition, you had to figure out the whole pipeline. Now it's just adding it to this, adding a new line to the startup, which is, yeah. pretty, uh, which is pretty cool. This, uh, this kind of stuff is, is very interesting because previously, you know, this was like DOS blog had just started and there were a couple of dependency injection frameworks, but there were issues with dependency injection and web forms. And, you know, maybe we should have done Castle Windsor or something years ago, but we didn't. Mm -hmm. So we ended up passing all these interfaces around. We just tossed interfaces around like candy. Right. It makes yeah. me wonder if like all that life cycle stuff, all those different bits of context you wanted, like go, um, I was thinking about the, SE like the SEO stuff and the meta, all the meta tags that we ended up digging around for. Mm -hmm. Those were a hassle. So what we ended up doing was opening these config files from all different parts of the app at all different layers, breaking lots of different rules, wouldn't you say? Yeah, 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 to be sure. And now, um, now when I'm, when I'm access to that information, I'm just doing this and I'm saying somebody else get me that stuff. Just there. Uh, and I'm just pulling that in as I see fit. I'm assuming I'm using it somewhere. How how many features would you need? Like this is a spike at this point, I would say. How many? How how close would you have to get this before you could swap it out on your current blog? Um, Full so the thing the thing that I am completely missing. So I would be happy to figure out a few more things so that my formatting was roughly the same. Um, the two major features I'm still missing are comments, how to handle comments, okay. and then then posting, just having a new post. So um, the, the whole XML RPC, which I've been reading about this week, um, is not in any way solved by what I have done so far. Um, and that's using pre-SOAP um, ID. Right. So um, it was something that I wasn't as familiar with. But um, I think I got the concept now, so I'm, I'm probably a couple of weeks from putting some rough how do you how do you add a new post? And at that point, I'd be happy to. Let to me um, let me share my screen. I wrote, as I recall, the uh, the the meta the meta weblog stuff oh. many many years ago, and this was an interesting one. So this is before meta weblog is the format that two thousand and three. <laughs> Meta weblog is the format that is like rest before rest. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, it it was it was XML RPC, so remote procedure call. So meta weblog example. And it is still the way that that Windows Live Writer sends stuff. So here's your API. New post. Mm -hmm edit post and get post and it's horrible right i mean it, it doesn't force ssl which we should probably by the way you've mentioned this before the whole internet's going to ssl soon yeah so we need to to do that and then we pass in a structure it looks like this so basically yeah. you know parameter in order so you're calling a function called get post yeah. and you're passing in an int and a string and a base 64 encoded thing. That's what happens when you post a blog. Got you. Yeah. And if, so you're posting to a particular URL and right. just one string and it's this, is that, is that right? So it'd be something like cancelman. Actually, let's go. I don't know if it'll answer. If I say pop a string, it's something like slash blog slash meta weblog dot ashx try um pop a string uh try, try blog slash um oh, oh gosh i think i've got this blogger dot aspx oh, blogger dot aspx yeah ashx it's, it's a, one of these aspx for some reason in my there it is there it is dos blog blogger access point okay See? Huh. yeah this is this thing again. This is the thing again. Why it's funny to be an, an aging programmer, you know what I mean? 
no disrespect to our young programmers or anyone else, but I just like, you know what this looks like? It looks like swagger and it looks like rest. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is an auto generated endpoint with documentation. And it was generated though by this thing, Charles Cook's, you know, you know what no SN means? No, 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 no strong naming. There were two versions, <laughs> the RPC strong naming version and the non strong naming version, right? So uh, here's get post and he's got, you know, docs on it. And then this is the order in which you pass the parameters. Gotcha. Okay. So this was magic back in the day, by the way, here's what a response looks like. So like name value pairs, the responses look a lot like requests, except they include the, 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 res the requests are ordered and the responses are name value pairs. Wow. The thing is though, like with a little bit of history and a little bit of thought, this isn't that complicated. It's yeah. an extremely simple and elegant thing. The yeah. only time it gets even remotely complicated is you notice this here, you have params, param, value, struct. Yeah. You basically skipped over all this crap. And then all of this is a structure that represents a post. Okay. And then it empties there, right? Gotcha. But you could see yourself writing a serializer for that, not too hard. Yes. The question is, how f how much effort do we put into um, abstracting that away? Well, here's the thing that MetaWebLog did, which I thought was so clever. Here's a post. What Charles Cook did is this RPC attributes, just like we see JSON attributes or XML attributes for serializing, right? Mm -hmm. And the – sorry if you can hear my my – yard guys mowing the lawn now so here's xml rpc member and it pulls out the value of link uh -huh. and then when it you know it, it ignores these because they don't exist and then there's you know descriptions for different things we would need to figure out are we going to re can you know re um reinvent the wheel huh. here yeah here's a here's a here's a nice one when you say create you pass in that entry Right, that's the entry one that you've passed in before. Yep. Then create a post, which is the meta weblog version of the post. Okay. Right, and then you do the mapping. Mm -hmm. And then you see on line 180 there, that's the kind of stuff we got to think about. The right. difference between you know what it thinks the link is. Oh yeah, exactly. And then here's an example of utility. We're going to need basically a uh, a dependency injected utilities thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that. the point is, it's all, and this has been running for 12, so many years, Cook yeah. Computing. I wonder, should we keep using it, or can we talk to Charles Cook and steal the code and port it? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I mean, if we're talking about um, doing some kind of uh, serialization, the the other idea I was thinking about was, do, is that a, does that mean middleware would be the best option in the design? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, oh. this is where we need help. <laughs> <laughs> this is where, you know, who knows, right? Um, yeah, there's so many questions to ask. And the problem when we're doing this kind of porting is that we don't know what the right way to go is, you know? Yeah. Is this the right way to go? Will it... Um, Will it will it back us into a corner and we'll regret it? Part of me, part of me likes to respect the past, though. I must admit, I think I may have mentioned this before. I kind of have this kind of uh, idea that we have to treat our software like you would a city maintenance, where essentially, if something works, you expand on the road. You don't necessarily uh, build. You don't. You don't necessarily build a bridge over something you, you you usually work with the infrastructure you have yeah, so yeah. part of me wants to make as much use of the so if we've used this this library part of me kind of wants to continue to use it in a new context as best we can uh, because the code's still good <laughs> well, that's a really good. interesting question right like one of us both of us could burn a huge amount of time yeah. messing around with this thing 
Sure. The last build of which I took in 2005, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I'm wondering, actually, I'm just going to take this and throw it into Reflector. Like, what all is in there? That is a really good question. So he's got some trace thing here. I don't know how to make this screen any bigger, I'm afraid. See, look, it's a ton of stuff. It's mostly attributes. So he's got a bunch of attributes that you decorate stuff with. Sure. But there's a non-trivial amount of work here. He's a good, yeah. good work, good programmer. But doing async, you know, 15 years ago when it was hard, got certificate support. I mean, it is a com it is an extremely complete XML RPC library. Sure. The question is. You know, is it is there any value in in, in not in, in doing anything with it beyond just continuing to use it? Yeah. And yeah. And, to, and and to be clear, if I understand correctly, it does work fine on dust on on um, dot net standard too, doesn't it? You're not having any issues. Um, or have you so not hit I've, this code yet? I haven't hit any of the published code yet, and that's 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 a big part of it. So the integration port part of this isn't as straightforward as. The other parts I've noticed. So, oh. this, so this actually exposes it as a ASHX file, not not ASA, but, but essentially a web service within the web sure. form context. And so here's a thought, though, Boris, who I think is going to become a new team member because he's providing valuable suggestions here, suggests a custom formatter. Uh huh. If you remember Adam Pub? You know, uh -huh. XML RPC. What had a Meta Weblog built on top of it? Okay. So if you recall, you see how it says MT oh, yeah, dot yeah. movable yes. type, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's a convention. Like let's all agree to use XML RPC in this way. So here is those those posts that we just saw, new edit and get, right? Adam Pub is another idea. We could potentially remove support for the movable type endpoint. And use Adam Pub instead, which I believe is supported by Windows Live Writer. Huh. So basically, it looks like it's like there's the blogger API, there's the movable movable type API, there's XML RPC underneath them all, and then later on there was this Atom Pub idea mm -hmm. that's more resty. Uh -huh. There are formatters for Atom built into Windows. Oh, okay. If I recall. Yeah, see, Atom formatter is part of system.servicemodel.syndication. That's hmm. back when we built uh, RSS stuff into that, into, into .NET itself. Yeah, gotcha. Here's the problem, though. If we go to docs, go to NuGet, not NuGet, .NET Core, rather, you can go all APIs and put that in. See? I know for a fact. That's not part of the standard. Of course. See? Yeah, of course not. Yeah. So then things start getting interesting. <laughs> yeah. we, you know, our goal here, for the few of you who have remained with us, um, <laughs> is to get this running on Docker and cross-platform, right? Exactly. So there's examples of doing XML RPC. Here's a meta weblog example. Oh, it's always weird when you go Google for stuff, mm -hmm. and then find <laughs> people talking about you. Yeah, yeah, that's ten bizarre. years ago. <laughs> right. So here's someone who's make who's in in system dot web dot routing, mm -hmm. and they're thinking about well, hey, maybe we can go and implement this with filter, and again, multiple ways, right? So here's someone's doing routing, which is quite clever. They actually load the input stream, look at the method call name. Okay. Remember our name, right? Edit post, yep. get post, yep. 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 and then split it up, load it up into the route data, and then send it along its way. Hmm. Right? Then you have a model binding provider. Look at this XML RPC model binding provider. None of this is rocket science, but it's it's all like which direction do you go? Make sure that it's legit, and then you know returns it, and then the model binder itself. This person is agreeing that it's hacky. Get the parameters out, right? Go digging for them, 
and then spin through and load them up and potentially doing the opposite when you go and serialize the response. It shouldn't be. Look at this here. Remember how I said it was like params and param? It's like pretty much hard coded. They just did yeah. that exact same thing. <laughs> Right, yeah. So there's lots of ways to do that. I bet you this would not be hard. That's from 2014. Cool. Yeah. Someone else suggest? Yeah. There's, there's all these. There's, there's Silverlight versions. There's Mono versions. But I, I think we agree. Is is it? It's not about XML RPC versus Atom Pub versus whatever. It's about getting it to work with LiveWriter. Correct. Exactly. We don't really care how it works with LiveWriter. Just that right. it does. Yeah. Okay. We have not yet, you and I, made a whole lot of roadmap stuff. But if I recall, last last time we had a call, we've been hacking on this Wednesdays and like random days. Mark and I get on calls. Uh, we didn't we make an issue? Here yeah. we go. Here, really friends. So take a look at this, people who are still listening. If you want to get involved, like don't just do it and then tell us. Like talk to us first and like make an issue and then brainstorm and then write the code. But um, we have two issues right now. This DOS blog under master is DOS blog um, classic. Right. Cool. Your DOS blog, which is on pop a string and a specific branch. Yeah. Maybe, why don't you, do you want to make a DOS blog core? Right, yeah, it's probably the best, yeah. Yeah, let's make a DOS blog core. I don't care who owns it. I mean, it can be me, it can be you, it can be us together. We just, you know, we, we don't have a high-level org. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no. But this, I think, is the, is the stuff we want to do. Yeah. This was our DOS blog core brainstorming here. I don't. Did you, are these checked? Are these real? I don't think this is right. These don't, yeah. this stuff, does that work? Yeah, I think so. You did RSS already on core? Well, no, no, no. So that's, so um, if, you, yeah, so if you navigate to, if you start the whole thing up and you go to, you know, whatever your URL is slash RSS, you will get an RSS feed. On your new one, on your web core integration. Yes, yes. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here, why don't you share your screen? Okay. Uh, let me see. See, see. Of course, it won't work now. Well, of course not. <laughs> Hangouts is all built with magic and dreams. It's, who knows if it works? Uh, let's, let's try this. You have the cleanest office ever, by the way. <laughs> you embarrass uh, us with your clean office. It's um, essential to a. Uh, Happy and productive life. Is that is that what it is? <laughs> what does that mean about my office? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> right. So you said slash RSS. So how did you implement that while well, that's loading up? What is the um so um so I'm I'm yeah I'm doing it through controllers again. Um feed controller. I, I'm saying I want you to produce text XML. Um and again, you may tell me I'm doing this completely wrong. Hey, man, don't even worry about it. Okay, good. So you made an HT, you made it an API controller because controller, it's core. Oh, right, you exactly. just got it RSS. Nice. Um, so I'm... I'm oh, caching. Yeah, I pull in description repository, which is where, I, like I said, I pulled in the, the things that were absolutely essential. Oh, wow. Uh, is that the old one that makes RSS? Yes. Yeah. Essentially, it is. I mean, it's calling the old code. We can go look at it in a second. But um, I wonder it's if cool. it's using that. How did we do this, though? I think we made our RSS. You know what I think? Yeah. We made. You know why this works? Remember how I just showed you that the RSS stuff doesn't work in core because it doesn't exist. Right. Right click on RSS root. I think we wrote that from scratch. Uh, RS. Oh, this. Yes. Yes, you did. Yes. These are all. These are all types that exist in New Intelligence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is... We, yeah, so the reason that that works and didn't break is that we didn't use the Microsoft stuff. <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's interesting. Check I never out. realized that. We wrote it from scratch. That means RSS was still so fresh. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. 
And here I'm doing the same thing again, it just inject, this is from my previous injection of, I'm literally going into that it whole XML file, pulling the accounts, and entry accounts, all that was essential apparently for this get RSS code to work. Okay. And this is, this is essentially the same code, I've probably just ripped it out. Repositories, that's the same repository code. And I've just, could do with some cleaning up, but this is essentially the same port it should was. Oh, well, wait a second. Seems like your machine is working hard right now. So that's 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 essentially a feed. That's a legitimate feed right there. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Or yep, I see your feed. Okay, all right. Yep. So that's. I mean, it's 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 um, it, the things I had to do was wire it up, um, but it, the actual work was really. About converting this to use. Okay, so you're you because you're because you're using our existing serializer for RSS. You're mm -hmm. no disrespect intended. Getting lucky. Yep. And it just worked. Yep. yep. That's yep. sweet. That's nice. Yep. See, that's the thing, and that's a funny a funny thing about porting code. If you think about, I think I showed. I think did I show you the the old project I did from school? We had a tiny operating system. The reason oh, no. that that oh so I have a little tiny operating system I wrote in in college, uh -huh. it ported cleanly over as well because everything it did was already implemented its own. Like there's something to be said for just making in memory structs and not having dependencies. Every dependency you have adds you know some problem. Now this caching here, that's old school caching. I bet you we could put a, a cache. Actually, so this is this is actually new. This is actually new school. No, no, it's old school style. Oh, right, right. I got you. Okay. I'm just yeah. proposing that I bet you there's an attribute we could put on that. Okay, okay. Or something. I don't know. Like the whole try, get value, cash set. I don't know. I, I, maybe oh, people who are listening might yeah, might yeah. have a way. I wonder if there's a better way to do caching with an attribute. I don't know. Yeah. Huh. That would be interesting. To see. I'd, I'd like to do that, actually, because this isn't, this isn't beautiful, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it works fine. But uh, the, all, getting all of this down to as few lines as possible is what I think is most amazing about all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've got RSS working already. So if we go back over to here, if I may rest control from you, then here is our... There we go. So here's this um, this list of stuff. You've got, there you go. This is the part that I think people like don't realize. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you when you've got this many uh, URLs, four thousand plus, not ruining old URLs, three hundred one, three hundred twoing them as cleanly as possible yeah. Yeah. is super important. This oh oh this was an interesting part here. Remember when you and I bumped into this last time? Oh, I don't really remember what that was about. Was that so about? I figured this out. I did a bunch of poking around, and if I understand correctly, I don't think that resgen.exe right. exists cross-platform right now. Right. Yeah. I might be wrong, but the, the the ability to generate. Let's go over here. I type resgen where? Let's say where it is. Where resgen? Yeah, see, that's part of this. I don't think ResGen exists cross-platform, so I don't understand. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's in MS Build. Maybe people can answer. I don't know how um, how to generate these satellite resources. And I remember remember when you and I tried to take this code mm -hmm. and build it at the command line. Yep, yep, yep. It that's runs. Good. It runs fine on core. It does not build from the command line on core. It needs VS to do that work, which is frustrating. Yeah. By the way, Boris makes the comment, he's correcting me correctly, he's correctly correcting me, that there is um, output, there's output caching. Is this your screen or my screen? 
Oh, you're sharing your screen of me sharing my screen. That's confusing. Oh, I see what's going on. Each time we talk, it rests control back and forth. Oh, All right, see. here we go. So Boris is saying caching via attribute is for output caching, and, ca and he's you're caching the data correctly. OK. So that's interesting. Um, getting it to build on Linux, we don't know. We, we, we had trouble with the satellite ResX files. There's a lot of interesting work here. I don't know whether, do you want any help if people take a piece here absolutely. and there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So why don't we, do you, what, do you want to make a DOS blog core and merge your thing in? Or do you want to make one over there on your, and rename yours? How do you want to do this? Because the, the, the core work is, the core spike is here. Yeah. Do you want to make a project? Yeah, yeah, I think we should. OK. So it would be Papa String slash DOS blog core. OK. And then you'd merge this branch in. And then yeah. we do that work over there. Yeah. Or we do it over here, and then it's all in another branch. But because I'm, you and I are still running full framework, I don't know if I want to. I kind of like the idea of a separate repository. I, I think it be I think it's gonna I just want the flexibility of not having to move immediately. <laughs> oh, I agree. I, I want a bit of flexibility in and if I push things too far up the chain, I'm gonna lose that uh, I'm gonna okay. lose because there's there's I mean there's other considerations I have to take because the way it handles uh, the, the way you deal with um, security and security context is, has to change as well and that changes sometimes in the service layer rather than in the, the UI layer. We couldn't separate those in web forms. So we're going to make some permanent changes here. So yeah, for making this separate is important. So we should figure out to do that. Then we can move this issue over there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, potentially if other people want to get involved, but I think there's there's some interesting work here because we should also maybe you and I decide uh, whenever I start a new project, I, I, I have this idea of a this we believe sure. post. So like what are our core tenants? You know what I mean? The yeah. core tenants of this thing that we are, oh, that's my lawnmower guy again. So the core tenants, like, like, are we saying reuse old DLLs? Like, do we, do we, do we, do we look at the, um, what's the word? Do we look at the dependency tree and remove stuff that's unnecessary, that's old stuff? Or do we accept that those things exist and they work great and not feel bad about them? Yeah. yeah I think I've made my case for not feeling bad about old things. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how how far do we go? Right? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's just a, a feel thing. But um, I, you know, the degree to which we can use things, I think we should. I think we shouldn't be afraid of of ditching a few things, though. I I do. We like I think that's Razor it. for themes. We do we do like ditching the theme engine. Yes, no, that can't go forward. <laughs> do we care? Like I said, we should make it build on Linux. But at the I, same time, there might it might not be possible with some of these I, old things in the res gen. I think we can make. I think we can and should because we can in that regard. Be, be. That means clone and build, right? Clone yeah. and build. Because remember, you and I tried this for a couple hours a couple yeah. weeks ago, and yeah. it, it didn't work. Yeah. So that's a question. Yeah. We also we want really flexible stuff. Like I don't know how to put it. Like all that social stuff that you did, like SEO and AMP, mm. and 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 uh, Twitter card support. That was uh, that was hard. Yeah, we don't want to lose that. <laughs> um, right now, logging should be core logging, right? We're going to switch it. Like, we're using old school logging, aren't we? We're using old school logging, yes. Yeah, and we should switch that. So then we should probably use DI as much as we can. Yep. DI all the things, as they say. DI all the things. There you go. This is just you know, a place to put it for now. Sure, sure. <clears throat> so I don't know whether or not this will scale or whether or not people will jump in and help or we'll get one or two people, but we are continuing to work on this, you know, I don't know, once or twice, core 
10 ounce. Yes, see, people are correcting my people are correcting my English. Tenant. Tenant. Yes, see, I was spelling it like we did in the 1600s. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I know what I'm your, doing. Your old English is impeccable. <laughs> yes, there's, that was my old my old English coming out. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, Mark and I work on that. We don't always, this is the first time we've ever broadcasted it, but we are trying to figure out how to do this. I don't know if we've done much coding right now, but we definitely understand the problem more. Was there something specific you wanted to try to get done today? Uh, I was. I kind of wanted to look at um, that editing tool you kind of mentioned. That's oh yeah, yeah. So I was looking at that. It was CK Editor. I thought this might be a good editor for us, mm -hmm. uh, but I dug into it, and it turns out that while it's kind of a cool editor, uh, it is missing one part that uh, we need. Do you see it? view source you can't because of the way it treats the dom there's no way to get at the actual text oh yeah that's that's a that's a right? stuff right there so if i go to councilman.com and log into the the back end for dos blog and i hit the little edit thing here's the current state of affairs yeah you remember we have an editor right yep yeah, yep yeah. Why do I have this like this? Was there a reason? Yeah. Do you remember what the editor was? Yeah, we, oh, gosh. Um, gosh, I have to look better. Let's go. If I go to config, yes. see this. I, I don't even think config loads on my, my instance. See? I've got, my system has mm -hmm. bigger issues. Oh, dear. For some reason, I can't load that let me go in the logs mind make sure I, your, I think your instance of dos blog is healthier than mine okay i mean i'm going to delete the logs See, we, i've got i don't know about, about you but i have like three to three to ten megs of logs every day i have quite that much <laughs> but like you know i need to turn off the refer stuff yeah sure See, look at that. i'm de i'm deleting right now two gigs of logs no, that's that's outrageous. It's kind of stupid. It's my fault. Let me hit that again. And then I'd like to move this to Azure too. I think actually that's another thing I'd like. I don't know about you, but do you do you mind? I feel like it'd be nice to have works nicely in Azure and works nicely in containers. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be a good thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, someone else is saying markdown. Everyone likes their markdown. to I guess I can't get in there until how can I do this all right trying to get into the logs here I think I may have not uploaded the latest config page here we go see uh, so it's looking for something okay edit config page edit config box line 77 Edit config box 77 RSS endpoint rewrite. That was, oh, uh, yeah. Why is that TXT? Um, yeah, that's text and that's TXT. All right, uh, so that's an edit, edit config box. So if we look at my edit config box. Hmm. I think there may have been a change. No, but look, mine is 2010. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a change you did. That's fine. That's a change I didn't take. Yeah, yeah, and it may be just coming back around to people both. are going to judge us for all the FTPing that's going on here. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, you made a change in May, in my no March. So let's see if that fixes it, because I'm got that's I, that hasn't changed. Yeah, see. Yeah, There's a ton of changes. Let's see if that'll that'll very likely break something else. So, <laughs> I was like, oh, did you what just are drop? What you doing, that? Hanselman? What's wrong with you? It's chaos. 
You're an agent of chaos, my friend. I, I am, man. Watch me take the whole blog down at this point. Yeah, see? Just what? randomly copying. There it is. See? Okay. All right. <laughs> it's chaos. All right. Uh, text editor. Editor. Where's the text editor? I thought there was a, a like a drop down for the kind of text editor that you wanted. Ah, there it is. Yeah. Those are the ones that we had. Right, right. Nice edit, nice edit editor. These are so old. Yeah. These are so old. But see, the ones we have are. Yeah. See, look, some of these might be easier. You know what I mean? Some of them are just like inline. As, uh, yeah, as long as you can do the HTML thing, that's just an essential switch to HTML. I'm, I'm fine with it. Right. That's essential because I, sometimes I just want to go in and make a change. I need the editor to also not um, reformat things. Right. Yes. So trust me. Okay, so this is also bad. Huh? What did you just do? Oh, no. So, see this here? Mm -hmm. Back in 2002, it was very common to pass in a assembly identity. Mm -hmm. I remember this. So, the text box adapter that we use to swap out is a, an actual assembly name. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's text box adapter. Yeah. As I recall, there's tiny MCE. Where are the text? Where are the adapters? So text box adapter. That's down here in DOS blog web. Ah, see, we made a thing called an edit control adapter. Ah, yeah, I remember working. Remember that? Yeah. So there's tiny MCE adapter. Okay. That mean, and then there's nice edit adapter. We would need to make one for each. So in the short term, let's break a couple of rules. <laughs> nice. What is it called? Nice edit adapter. I'm just gonna hit that. Now we put in. We were one of the first open source projects to really use um, hot reloading, if you recall. So we should be able to hit refresh and see nothing happens. Um, we actually load the config. So that did not load. What was the other one called? Tiny MCE? Tiny MCE? Oh, I'm not logged in as the uh, admin anymore because it reset. Let me log in as admin. Huh, that is not loading. Let me check that log again, maybe. What is going on? Oh, I never saved the file. You save it and then you upload it back up to. Okay. That's my fault. See? This, it's usually an error between the chair and the keyboard. Ah, see? There it is. Called it. Okay, so that one is what? Tiny MCE. Mm. How do I switch it to source? There you go. There you go. Okay. All right, that's not bad. What are you? What are you currently using? Um, I so rarely go to the site to edit. I go to the site to edit when I've realized I've made a mistake just after posting. Oh well, and the I'm problem. The problem I'm having is that I got a complaint recently that a website that I manage, which is Download SQL Server Express dot com, mm -hmm. which is a redirect to here. Okay. They said that when you down when you click Download SQL Server Express, that they wanted. Uh, SQL Server Express 2017. Uh, yeah, yeah. I kind of didn't know it was a thing. I forgot. So download now. So I got to figure out what that is. Ah, uh, I see. So it's this forward link. 
There you go. So being able to edit this is kind of essential for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's. Yeah. So that. So I'll do it as a practice. Seventeen Express. Now this needs to have a link maker. Do we have a link maker? See, see that how we're missing the ability to make a link. Yep, yeah, that's kind of essential. So this isn't really a good editor right now. No, no. Otherwise, you, you know, otherwise you back into source code. Every otherwise, time. I'm doing this, yeah. and that's wrong. I I think I think that by the way that me making this website mm -hmm. guilted them into getting their act together and uh, made them improve the ability like the way that you download <laughs> SQL Server Express. Download SQL Server Express 2017 Studio. Management Studio. Is that the new one? Cool. Take that. Yeah, but see, I don't want it to look like that. I'm going to look like this. An H3. Do we have any H's? See, do I have even? That's a little bit of work. There must be a checkbox or something to make. There must be a button. But there must be a way to have an, it, it, it make an href. It, it, it seems like the biggest oversight <laughs> of it the can't, well, It can't be. Like, why would we even have included it? It doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. You'd be shocked at how much traffic this page gets. It's stupid. <laughs> that makes sense to keep it up. It solves a problem for me. Now let's see if I ruined it though. So now I'm going to make sure that it. I'm always afraid that I'm going to like hit an error and then corrupt the file. Now you just did a backup, so. True. There you go. Okay, cool. So that's good. So I don't have now. What was the other one? This was which one? Nice. This is tiny MCE. Nice edit adapter. Let's try that one. It is interesting. I don't think JavaScript was at the point where we could do it without an adapter. Right. That's not working. No, let's, look at, let's look at the logs. What is this about? That looks like a no op. I don't know what's going on. I didn't do anything. I wonder if I wonder if the it might be also that the um, the CDNs that we use for these different things don't exist. Yeah, see this here. Sure. Like, does that does that JavaScript even exist anymore? It does. Let's see if it loaded here. Yeah, see? Hmm. Well, then we're looking at the DOM. I think the point is, though, we all want it to look like medium. Yes, yes. Right. Exactly. We, agree. we agree with that. Like, we know what, yes. the, we know what the goal is. It should, look, it should look like medium. Yeah, they have pretty much nailed both the simplicity and the uh, usefulness of a blog editor. Okay, so then why? Where's our button for? Yeah, I don't. I think that we're passing in information about what this should, what what tiny MCE should look like, mm -hmm. but we don't actually like it's not listened to anymore. Maybe we're getting a new version. So if you recall, tiny MCE, tiny MCE adapter. I remember when you and I upgraded this yep, to yep. 4.1. See, plugins code, I don't think that's getting picked up. Uh, sure. I uh, remember, remember this? Yeah, there's the code plugin. Oh, hang on. Look, here's 
that that JS, which is TinyMC itself, mm -hmm. OK? Then we load this from TinyMC locally. Ew. See? Which I don't think exists on my machine. I don't have a TinyMC folder, do I? I don't think I do. Let's, let's have a look. No, it's gone. It's gone. This was a typo. So... Tiny MCE min, tiny MCE plugins. Yeah, I don't have that folder. Is it look? Where is it located? There it is. Nope, that's one hundred one. That's a four hundred one. Missing. <laughs> see, missing plugins file. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 because it probably never got loaded. Um, tiny plugins. CK, yeah, so everyone's saying CK. So Jonathan Jones is saying CK editor. Oh, someone else is correcting me. I might be wrong. Is it nice edit or Nick edit? <laughs> It's Nick edit, but I called the adapter nice edit because I'm an idiot. <laughs> it is Nick edit, though. But regardless, it didn't load because I'm dumb. There's a couple things here, a couple issues here. But the, the first one is that it is clear that that code plugin could have never have loaded. <laughs> I don't know when that. Ah, there it is. Tiny MC. No, see, look, it's right there. It's just not on my DOS blog web tiny MCE. There it is. So we do have it there. We do have it, but maybe I never uploaded it. Okay. Which gets to our larger issue that it's time for you and I to have like, containers and stuff. Yeah. Because it's just sloppy. FTP is a bad idea. Yeah, see, I never uploaded that plugin. All right. We're putting out all the. Dirty laundry here, man. Yeah. People are judging us. I can feel their judgy <laughs> eyes. Maybe, maybe they're just judging me. You're coming out looking like gold here. <laughs> Not according to the comments. <laughs> Not according to the comments. Everyone's like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> these guys suck. I thought this was supposed to be a really good programming tip here. Uh, this one is what? Is this tiny? Which one is this? Am I looking at tiny MC? I feel like the plugin didn't do anything. Let's see if it even loaded. Oh, look at that. They're actually telling me don't use this tiny MCE <laughs> in the comment. That's pretty smart. Look at that. That is so, cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's getting loaded, but it's like it's, it's it, even the CDN is judging me. <laughs> uh, and the way we've got this, we've kind of buried it a little bit, haven't we? Yeah, I'll deal with that one later. Um, did it load the JS though? Plugin, it did. Okay. okay. So then the question was, you know, did it get what does the plugin do? Tiny MC code plugin. Toolbar, here you go. Adds a toolbar to edit the code. Yeah, there you go. Plugins code. All right. Okay. All right, cool. So that's that's what it's supposed to do. Maybe that's what that is. Is that all it is? It's just a tools code? That's kind of lame. Well, yeah, I think the part that I'm realizing kind of sucks is that we have to write an adapter for each one of these, yeah. which is fine, but it means there's no JavaScripty way. It's really this code right here, remember? Yep. And you have to go and make a text box, put a class on it, and then line it up to another one. Ultimately, though, there's nothing else there. 
it'd be nice to have a dynamic way to swap out editors. Mm -hmm. People are suggesting CK editor, but I don't believe CK editor has a source view. Tiny MCE's default configuration may be a fault, maybe a bit lacking. That's what someone says. Very valid point. Um, yeah, not super easy. And I'm sure that there's some 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 plugins that we are forgetting to enable. But the number one thing we need is is editing the. Um, I have plugins code right there. Yeah. I see. The issue is that we don't have um, code. Plugins. The issue I'm seeing is that we don't have uh, links. You now the ability to go Control K and pop up a link to edit yeah. links. Yeah. Add in Scott. It's in there. Built years back. Which one? Tiny MCE link editor. Maybe it's a plugin. Ah. Plugin. Okay, plugins colon link. So where do we drop this thing in? That's the thing we've got it buried in our. See, this is the thing we've we've made the mistake with stuff like this. Yes, we buried this. And this is the problem. Like, oh, CK editor. Someone says it's an editor for that. Still, plugin link mm -hmm. adds a toolbar. So that means is plugins comma separated. You know what I mean? Because I'm only seeing samples. I'm only seeing samples with just this. Is it link, comma, or you know what's the? Oh, to have multiple. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question. Advanced code editor. I didn't even know that existed. Well, the fact that they pluralized it, you would assume they. <laughs> yeah, but is it comma separated? I mean, that's what I would assume. I'm surprised though we're not seeing any samples. Tiny plugins examples. The editor has view source with full version. Yeah, see that? Oh, that's what I remember that. Siva Krishna is saying CK editor had view source with the full version. I remember that being an issue, and the problem was that uh, we didn't want to pay because we were open source. And we wanted to make it flexible for everybody. So here's an example, tiny MC. There you go. It's space. It's it's spaces. That's why we ask, right? <laughs> yep. I wouldn't have guessed that one. So yeah, I would not have guessed that either. So then, plugins code link. See, this is the other thing, right? Do I need to go and get all these different plugins? one at a time and drop them in and then recompile. I think we'll have to leave that for another day, but now at least we know what to do. The question yeah, would be, yeah. what is the appropriate license and the minimum amount of stuff that one would need to have a decent editor for a blog post? Yeah, yeah. But then yeah, if we can go and say a medium editor, that'd be better, right? Yeah, <laughs> that would be perfect. I just got to run, like I said, I only kind of use this if it's an emergency and I've seen I've just wrecked the first paragraph of a blog post. Yeah. This is about how would you edit an existing one though is my question. Because I, yeah, yeah, I get I get sure. emails about like, oh, this is one yeah, this is what I want. See? You know the other thing I'd like that we couldn't do ten years ago is drag and drop pictures. Huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like let's let's even go so far as to say could we get it to the point where we would not need to use Live Writer anymore? Right. That might be cool too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would be a thing to figure out. Someone else saying CK editor, we could use that. Getting this to work at least unblocks me from my my little mini edits that I need to do. So that's yeah. helpful. Yeah, sure. Um, so I just make a need. To, I just make a couple of notes because I've got a few things you, uh, I've got to get done here now. Yeah. So, do you want to stop sharing your screen? Am I? You are sharing your screen, yeah. Oh my gosh, keep it away from me. How do you do it? Uh, the button at the top. There you go. Cool. Um, my kids are about to come home from school, so I need to go. Cool. I don't know if this was the most productive 90 minutes, but for the 67 people who stayed, uh, 
I'm sure that we could use some help, but this is just something that Mark and I are poking around at sometimes. The goal would be a cross-platform DOS blog as a logging engine, and it'd be work nicely for everyone. Yeah, yeah. You can program it, doing programming on Linux and run it on Linux. That would right. be... In a, in a, and, and then we'd be able to document how hard it was. Because like, right. how much time do you think you have into the front end, to the oh. port? Gosh, uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe uh, three weeks worth of part-time work. Well, like uh, put it in the terms of hours, because three weeks could be 120 oh, hours. You know what I mean? That's true. No, I don't do part-time <laughs> 40 hours. But no, uh, it's about uh, 15, 45 hours, I'd say. 45 hours. So a week's a, a person yeah. week. Yeah. A person week. Okay. Yeah, it'd be really nice to get something on core. But I think that the number one thing that we're trying to do and that that, that, that I would give you the credit for is pragmatic. Like, mm -hmm. this is not trying to be the perfect .NET Core sample app. It's not trying to do things perfectly and gloriously. There's a balance between getting it to work and getting it to be like a poem or some haiku. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, people are saying that they enjoyed it. There's at least three people who enjoyed it. So let's let's try to maybe plan on email uh, to do something a little more structured. Yeah, and sure. uh, let's come up with like a task that we can accomplish yeah. together. Is that cool with you? Yeah, and then good. let's offline, I'll, I'll stop the broadcast and then we'll talk about where we want it to live and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sounds good. All right, cool. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm Scott and uh, Mark is Papa, P-O-P-P-A, string on Twitter. So say hello to us. Bye-bye. See ya.